expectations. Say with me, expectations. Expectations. We always have expectations, guys. We have expectation of people. Okay, we come into relationships and we have expectations of how that relationship should be, of what should happen. We have expectations of ourselves. We have expectations of situations that we go into. Expectations of church, like I just said. And now so interesting, Forbes magazine did an article on expectations and, and it caught my attention. It is called Eight unrealistic expectations that will ruin your life. Imagine that. And like Steve Backlund says, I'm going to say a couple of things and we're going to laugh at them. All right. Remember Steve Backlund? He would say a couple of lies. Like, let's laugh at that. These expectations, when I heard them, I was at home preparing the message. I was like cracking up because I couldn't even believe these are expectations that we have. But in reality, I saw myself in this. For example, okay, eight unrealistic expect number one life should be fair that's an expectation that we all have how about we laugh at that because life is not fair <laughs> all right we all expect life to be fair number two we expect opportunities to fall into my lap yeah we're laughing a couple of that all right number three yeah, this one's hilarious everyone should like me everyone we expect everybody to like us Number four, people should agree with me. Imagine that one. I mean, sometimes you don't even agree with yourself. <laughs> you want people to agree with you. It's false expectation, all right? I, I, this one's hilarious. People know what I'm trying to say. That's an expectation. Oh, but they understand what I'm trying to say. No, they don't. <laughs> Explain yourself, man. Say it clear. Okay, another expectation all right, I'm going to fail. That's an expectation that people have. I'm going to fail and made that top eight list, all right? Another one, things will make me happy. How about we laugh at that one? Things will make me happy. That's an expectation we have. Oh, if I get a new house or a new car, you know, it will make me happy. If I get that shirt, you know, or those sneakers, all right? Uh, and this one, the last one is even the funniest one. This is hilarious. Eight unrealistic expectations that will ruin your life. Here we go. For the married couples, I could change him or her. I could change him. Oh, I could change her. Yeah, let's laugh at that one. <laughs> how long have you been trying to change him? Or how long have you been trying to change her? What has come out of that, <laughs> right? So all these, right, are expectations that people have. And when you go with these expectations into a relationship or to live life, get ready. You're going to be wrecked. You're going to be wrecked. All right. So in this series, we want to answer the question, what does God expect of us? What does God expect of us? All right. Because I think that as Christians, each of us that are here this morning, we want to live a life that is pleasing to him. Right? Right? Am I correct? Uh, I think that if God has expectations, I, I want to live a life that pleases him. So what does he expect out of me? But I'm going to tell you some things this morning that might change the way that you see some things. For example, how can you live a life that is pleasing to a God that you can't fail? I want you to think that for a moment. How can you live a life that is pleasing to a God that you can't fail him? What do you mean that I can't fail God? Very easy. The Bible says that God knows the end from the beginning. He knows everything. He knows every word that you're going to say. He knows every thought that's going to go through your head. He knows every action you're going to take. So you can't catch him by surprise. God is not up there in the throne of heaven, lo looking over like a balcony into earth, looking at what you're going to do and eating, okay, his nail saying, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Oh, man, he did it. Oh, my God. He ruined it. 
he got me off guard. No, you can't catch God off guard. You can't. So, you can't fail him because the reality is that he has no expectation because he knows. The Bible says about Jesus, and it breaks me because yesterday I was in a retreat with the youth leadership of our church. They're still actually out there, and I was sitting with them, and they were talking to me about how to, how to deal with failure. How to deal when, when, when people, you know, they talk and they criticize and, and you fail and things didn't go. And they go, Pastor, how do you deal with that? And I'm gonna, I told them, look, very easy. The Bible says that Jesus didn't entrust himself to man because he knew what was in man. Whenever you have an expectation from somebody about something, you're in a position to fail. I don't expect anything from anybody. Why? Because I know what's in people. I know what's in me. And God knows. So it lists off that pressure to expect something in return. Oh, is that I gave them a birthday gift and now you're waiting for them to come to your birthday and give you a gift and they don't show up and then you're, oh my God. Or sometimes we're worried, oh, they unfriended me. And Facebook, they're not my friend anymore. I wonder what happened. And I thought we were going to be Facebook buddies for the rest of our life. <laughs> Expectations that we have. Oh, I expected my boss to see my performance and give me a raise. And I've been working here for two years and they haven't even told me about getting a raise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Expectations that we have, false expectations that we build, but God knows everything about us. So you can't really fail him because he doesn't expect anything out of us. And let me tell you something, that is something that will go contrary to the religious mindset because a religious mindset, oh, but I got to do things to please God. I mean, what do you mean, pastor, that I can't do something to please God? For example, I read my Bible in the morning, pastor, because I want to please him. I want to know the scripture. I memorize some verses during the year. I want to please God. Or, or pastor, you know, I pray before going to bed. I even lay hands on my children. Because I want to live a life that will please God. Pastor, I come to church every Sunday. And not only that, I joined one of your small groups during this semester too. Boy, you know, I'm living up to expectation. Really? Did God not have that expectation of you for this semester? Is that what he wanted you to do? Pastor, guess what? God spoke to my heart. And since last Sunday, I've been bringing my 10%, my tithe to church. And now I know that God is happy with me because I tithe to him. Oh, yeah? So does that mean that he wasn't happy with you before? Because the Bible says that he was pleased in Jesus. So because I bring some money, now God is happy because he needed some money because God is really going under. You know, the economy is really hitting him. And the church is going to be ruined because, you know, the church depends on the tithes and all. Well, does this depend on me or you or our giving? Or does he sustain everything? And he touches the hearts. And the moments that you don't tithe, then all of a sudden he touches the heart of somebody else. And all of a sudden, everything just works out because before you and I walked here, he was already God. And he already had things under control. Expectations. Ah. <sighs> So the question is, if these things that we're doing that we think are pleasing God because we want to do his will and we want to do what's right, do we really please him? Or what we do is that we put pressure on ourselves to perform. Because I believe that a lot of Christians are in performance mode. Performance mode. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. And then there's a big separation between the commandment of God, okay, and my sin. And I'm trying to perform to be according to the commandment of God because God has said this and he has said that and he has said this and he has said that. And I open my Bible and his commandments all over and I need to perform and I need to get there, but I have my sin and there's this gap in between. And how can I bridge this gap? 
And that's what we call the Christian life. My Christian life is me trying to run around, trying to bridge this gap before I die. Let me tell you something, brother. That sounds tiring to me. That sounds purposeless to me. Because I'm trying to live to fill in expectations that I think that God has of me. Because that's what they taught me in the other church. That's what the Catholic church taught me. That's what my old pastor in the Baptist church taught me. That's what I read in the Bible. You know, you got to, you know, the Ten Commandments, pastor. Come on. And then you go to Israel and you have the Jews over there in Israel in front of the Wailing Wall trying to fulfill and live out those commandments. And they're praying and they're moving. And one time I looked at the Jews that are praying in front of the wall and I'm like, why do they pray and move? They're just rocking back and forth. And I said, oh, very simple, Pastor, because the Bible says you should love the Lord with all your heart and all your strength. So they're putting their strength into their prayer. I'm like, oh, my Jesus Man, that's a good way of doing some exercise while you pray, man. But I don't know if God is really behind that thing. And they're doing it. And they say you should put the law of the Lord in your forehead. So they walk around with this big little stick here. And inside of that, they have the little Torah wrapped up here as a stick around their head. Because they think that that pleases God. And I'm not here to talk about anybody's religion or their way of worshiping God. Hey, praise God. But if I'm your pastor, I'm here to tell you that there's certain things that we expect that God expects from us that we got it wrong. And we need to take that weight off. Because like we just sang, we have our champion. And our champion is Jesus. And Jesus did everything for me that I couldn't do. Everything that the law demanded, the perfection that the law demanded, I couldn't live up to that standard. But Jesus Christ, the only perfect one, the only righteous one, the only just one, he lived those things out so that I could be right with God. Right with God. Right with God. You see, Romans 5, 1 and 2. We got that back there, Lewis. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, beautiful verse, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith. This is a dangerous preaching, guys. This is a dangerous message. Some people are like, Pastor, don't preach that. Half the people are going to go to South Beach and go on sinning then. But then I'm not going to preach the Bible. Because I'm afraid that people are going to go off sinning. I'm not here because I'm going to go off sinning. I'm here because I'm so grateful because of what he did in my life. When I didn't have purpose, he came to me, gave me purpose, filled me up. I want to live for him. I don't want to run away. Since we have been made right in God's sight, I want you to look at yourself right now. I'm going to ask a question in reverse. Usually in the services, who has not received Christ? The question in reverse. How many people here have, and at one moment, received Christ as their Lord and Savior? Raise your hand. You're sure that the day you die, you're going to be in heaven. You have a relationship with the Father right now. Raise your hand. Okay. Everybody that has their hands up. Everybody that has their hands up. Listen to this. You have been made right in the sight of God. Pastor, but my marriage is breaking down. You have been made right in the sight of God. Pastor, but I just went off on my wife or on my husband. You have been made right in the sight of God. Pastor, yesterday I watched something that I shouldn't be watching. You have been made right in the sight of God. By faith, we have peace with God. What do we have with God? Peace. Peace. We have peace. He's not angry at you. Yeah. Like Sammy Sosa. Remember Sammy Sosa? Throwing up the pin. He hit the home run. I don't even know how many times he kissed that peace sign, man. I got confused. We have peace with God. And here we go. Because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Why? 
because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of who? Because of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because of how many times I read the Bible, because of how many verses I know, because I'm rearing up my children the right way to love God and come to church. We get here, Pastor. Service doesn't start till 10. We're here already at 8.30 in the morning. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. Where do we stand? In a place of undeserved privilege. Do we deserve it? No. Do we earn it? No. What does it say there? That he brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. We're standing at a place that is a privilege, guys. And we confidently and joyfully look forward into sharing God's glory. So here we go. Let me preach to you. I have 12 minutes to preach to you. All right? When you look at a commandment, don't attempt to obey it on your own effort. The Bible is full of commandments. All 66 books have commandments of how we should live life. The mistake is when we think that God has that expectation of us and we try to say, okay, Lord, here I go. Superman, here I go. Super spiritual man. Here I go. Super Christian. You have an SC on your chest, you know, and you're like, ah. Here we go. What happens? Don't attempt to obey these commands on your own effort. Ask God. Here's the key. Ask a God who lives inside you. Once again, how many have received Jesus as Lord and Savior? Raise your hand. Here we go. Everybody? Most of you guys? All right. Here we go. Here's the key. Ask God who lives inside of you through his Holy Spirit to live out that commandment through you. That's the key. Ask a God who lives inside of you through the Holy Spirit to live out that commandment through you. When you read a commandment, don't say, oh, pretty good idea. I'm going to try to do it. Say, oh man, that's amazing. Holy Spirit, if you want me to walk like that, you live inside of me, help me. Because I can do it. But you live inside of me and you could do it. You could do it through me. So what I do, I surrender to you. You see the difference? You see the difference? It's a yielding. It's a surrender to God. It's letting him be God. Okay? It's the difference. What is the difference? It's a difference between, listen to this, independently, okay, independently trying to perform for God or depending on God and relying on him to live through you. Big difference. Some of us, independently, we try to perform for God. Or you say, you know what, Lord? I rely on you, man, to live through me. So I want to give you, in these 10 minutes that we have, left, four things. Two minutes for each. Here we go. Four, okay, important things as you let God live through you. Not to please Him, or because you need to fulfill an expectation, but because you need him to live through you, to live the Christian life. Number one, here we go. Number one, real quick. To be in a relationship with him. What do we need to do? Number one, be in a relationship with him. We need to be in relationship with him. Focus on getting to know God. If you're young in the faith, Amelia, I'm so happy to see you here this morning, my brother. Good to have you here today, man. I've been joyful in my heart because of what God has been doing in you, man. You're a gift. If you're new in the faith, like Emilio starting out in his walk with God, or you're old in the faith, focus on getting to know God. I'm building that relationship. Pursue him. Okay? Pursue him. How do you pursue him? Well, you pray. Or you read your Bible. You come to church. But not because he is expecting it of you. But because I want to be in a closer relationship with him. 
You see, I'm already trying to find out what to give my wife for Mother's Day. It's next Sunday. Next Sunday, church is going to be packed because moms manipulate their sons. You know what? The mom, ven conmigo a la iglesia. Come with me to church. The guy's never been in church, but lo único que te pido, the only thing I ask is you come with me to church. So next week, there'll be people here almost like on Easter Sunday. And I'm trying to figure out from now, what does my wife want for Mother's Day? What does she want? Why? Because, listen to this, I'm in relationship. I want to give her something. She hasn't asked me for anything. She's not here. I actually left to get the other kids and my kids. So I'm talking to you in private. Don't tell her when she walks in, all right? I've been asking the kids, oh yeah, have you heard mom say anything that she wants? Not because she needs me to give it to her, but because why? I love her, man. I, I want to give her something that she loves and she'll feel honored by That's why I read my Bible. That's why I pray. Because what? I want to know him more. Poor musicians, man. I got these guys coming up, coming down, coming up. Your faith does not rest on your effort, but instead in God's ability to work in your life. I'm going to repeat it. Your faith is not to rest in your effort, but instead in God's ability to work in your life. Jesus said it like this, okay? How did he say it? He gave the example of grapes on a vine. That's the example that he gave. And Jesus is the main vine, and he said, we are the branches. In John 15, 4, he says, remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit, if it's severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. So what am I to do? You know what? I want to remain in relationship. You guys understand? Is that hard to do? No. Lord, help me be in a closer relationship with you. Lord, show me how you want me to relate to you. In John 15, 4, Jesus says, I have loved you even as a father has loved me. Remain in my love. Remain in my love. Lord, I want to remain in love with you. Number two. Okay. The second thing. Trust him. It's not an expectation that God has. But we'll walk in a closer relationship with him if we learn to trust him. Okay. For example, if you don't see the end of the tunnel right now, you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel? And you're like, man, it's really dark in here. It's really tough right now. Trust God to work things out. Trust him. He's your father. He has you in the palm of his hand. He loves you. He reached out to you before you knew him. And he brought you into a relationship of right standing with him. Trust, guys, that he is good. Trust that God is good. Trust that he has the best in mind, even when you don't understand. Please listen to what I'm going to say. Because a lot of us, we try to understand God in order to trust him. You're not going to understand him. Just trust him. Just trust him. Just surrender. Trust him with the most precious things that you have. Your children, your husband, your marriage, your family, your everything. Trust him with it. Romans 4, 5. Write this down. Romans 4, 5. Whoever, I'm sorry. However, to the one who does not work but trust a God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. Listen to this. One who does not work but trust God. What does he want you to do? He wants you to work? No, don't work. Trust God. Trust God. Walk in this confidence, like the song was saying. Walk in this confidence, because you know who has your back. You know who daddy is. You can walk confidently, because even though you don't see him with your eyes, you know who's walking behind you, who's taking care of you. Number three. I could actually do this, man. Three points in ten minutes, man. I'm excited. Number three. How do I stay dependent on that on him here it is to depend completely on him 
write that down, to depend completely on him. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. It says, then Jesus said, come to me. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What does Jesus say? So if Jesus is saying, come to me, what does that mean? That I walked away. If Jesus is saying, come, but I'm there with him, would that make sense? Like crazy. If I tell Max, hey, Max, come. But Max is here next to me. I'm like, where do you want me to come? I'm like, here. You know, it's like. So if Jesus is saying, come to me, what does that mean? Oh, I'm like over there, like by the door. Or maybe I'm here, like by the front row. And Jesus said, hey, come over here. Come to me. Stay close. Depend on me. Come to me and I will do what? Listen to this. He will give us what? Rest. All those that are what? Weary and carry heavy burdens. You know who are the most weary and heavy burdensome that I've seen? Christians. Christians that don't understand what's the new covenant relationship we have with God. Oh man. Yes, see, super Christian. Don't forget that. I should preach like that next week. I'm going to get my shirt SC. It doesn't stand for super Chris. The super Christian. All right. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. That's what's happening here today. Because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you'll find rest for your soul. Let me ask you a question. Look, How's your soul this morning? Are you at rest? Do you know that you're at peace with God? Or do you feel that your soul is striving? And you're trying to get all these things together. Oh man, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to send this letter. I got to write this email. I got to go tomorrow to this interview. I got to da, 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 da. And you're here, but your mind is somewhere else. Hey, relax. He has your back. For my yoke is easy to bear, and, my, and the burden I give to you is light. And the fourth point, fourth point, I love this one, okay? If we want to let God live through us, what we need to do is continue in freedom. Continue in freedom. Continue in freedom. Galatians 5.1 So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. You want to learn about this that I'm speaking to you today? Read the book of Galatians. Six chapters. It's not a big book. And ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit reveal to me what this book is about. Galatians in the Bible, New Testament. Christ has set you truly free. Make sure that you stay how? Make sure you stay free. And don't get tied up into slavery to the law. See, when the Bible talks about the law, what is it talking about? God's commandments. Law is God's commandments. Galatians 2. Galatians 2, verse 19 to 21. Listen to this, guys. Let your spirit receive this. For when I tried to keep the law, when I tried to fulfill the commandment, when I tried to live up to the expectation, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I died to the commandment. I died to the expectation. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I may live for God. This is very powerful. Because it's saying that if I'm living for the expectation, I'm not living for God. You imagine that. Oh, but I thought I was going hard after him. I thought I was living for him. No, it says here that you're not living for him. You're living for that. I'm going to give myself an amen, bro. I'm going to pray for myself and tip myself back here. My old self has been crucified with Christ. And 
is no longer I who live. Here we go. But Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat this grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law, if obeying the command, if living for the expectation could make us right with God, then, we, then there was no need for Christ to die. I don't want Christ's sacrifice to be for nothing. I want to take hold personally of that sacrifice. Not just for salvation, but for life. I don't want, just want to say, oh, the day that I die, I'm going to be in heaven because he saved me. No, I want to live the life. Christ lives in me. I don't want to try. Jesus lived through me. That's what I want to say. And I want to invite you this morning to put all the expectations to the side and surrender completely to him. Surrender to him. Put the expectations. Pastor doesn't expect anything from you. Your wife, your husband shouldn't expect anything from you. I expect for him to pay the bills. I expect for him to do it. And you pray to God, man, and you ask God to change his heart because you can't change his heart. Leave that poor guy alone. Leave that woman alone. I want you to close your eyes. And ladies, can we go back into that song that we were doing a second ago? Because I feel I just preached it. <laughs> you are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. Let's put the letters. You crown me with confidence. I'm seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it we get what we don't deserve Yes, Jesus. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. Let's stand up this morning. I am who you say I am. Come on, worship him. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. He's teaching it how to receive it. So let all the striving, let all the striving cease. This is my and that's victory. our victory. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. Yes, Lord. You 
are my champion. Yes, God. So I want to make an invitation this morning. If you want to just surrender to him and stop striving and trust that your father's a good father, that he loves you, and you just want to learn to depend on him more, if that's you, come here to the front. Come, come. Man, I got to walk up here to the front, man. I'm going to walk down here and pray for myself. Get over here. If you've been trying, he's already pleased. Receive his good graces over you, man. Receive his good grace over you. Oh, just let him give rest to your spirit this morning. Give him, let him receive all the burdens that you have. Just give it to them. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for thinking that you have expectations of me. I'm sorry for thinking that you expect me to please you today i understand that you're pleased in jesus already so i receive that grace upon my life i receive that grace upon my life you see as you're there with your eyes closed i just want to read a verse in hebrews 10 verse 16 and 17 over you and let your spirit receive this this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my law, my commandments in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sin and lawless deeds. It's inside of you guys. Live from the inside out. Live from the spirit that lives inside of you. He is the only one that could please God. So we're going to sing undefeated one more time and just let his grace wash over you this morning. Or maybe you're listening online and you haven't made the decision to trust your life to Jesus. I just want to ask you to pray after me. Jesus, I thank you for your sacrifice on that cross, for taking the place that belonged to me today I recognize that I am a sinner and I need you I receive you in my heart as my Lord and as my Savior and I ask that your Holy Spirit would guide me would lead me would show me who I am in you Jesus I thank you and it is in your name we pray amen